life support, good. Depth, one, zero, nine, or two, eight meters. At bottom, repeat, at bottom. And I went down, and I opened my eyes in my, in my mask in the darkness uh, with my flashlight, and I saw, like, right in front of me, this huge eyeball. These sponges and coral, for example, were found at depths of around 3,000 meters. There are also lots of fish, for example, the powerful but endangered wolf fish. The deep sea is known to be home to plenty of scary looking dangerous fish, but there's also a ton of other things that are at the bottom of the ocean. To no surprise, some junk, shipping containers that fell overboard, maybe bones, and possibly even corpses. However, a large majority of the ocean is still undiscovered, and by large majority, I mean approximately 95%. So even if we know a lot about what we've explored, in the grand scheme of things, it's not much at all. But hey, something is better than nothing, and it gives us a chance to talk about what we do know. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking, what are the scariest things hiding in the deep sea? How's it going guys, Jared Bronstein here, welcome to LBQ, make sure to drop us some comments below with some videos you'd like to see on our channel, and stick around until the end for some bonus content. For now, let's get right into this one and talk about the scary things hiding all the way at the bottom of the oceans. Although it is incredibly dark, we're talking pitch black, we've still found ways to capture footage of the ocean floor, and some of the stuff found in the deepest parts of the ocean are quite terrifying. All sorts of fish or creatures really, but aside from the goblin sharks and deep sea anglers that will keep you up at night, there are a few other scary things that could be lurking in the deepest parts of the oceans, starting with unknown species. Now I'm certain of this one. There are things down there that we never thought existed. New types of fish, bacteria, algae, all of it. And because they're currently unknown, I can't speak factually, but I'm fantastic at speculating. All kidding aside, based on what we do know from the deep sea, odds are there are creatures down there that can not only survive extremely cold temperatures, but also don't rely on light to see. Due to the fact the deep sea isn't as active as its counterparts, odds are these species most likely don't need to eat as often, although preferred. It's possible, much like the deep sea anglerfish, they can go weeks or even a month without food. Obviously not ideal, but life happens. These new creatures could possibly be poisonous or incredibly dangerous. There's also the possibility of something down there, maybe the algae or some kind of species, that benefits the human race. Something that leads to new medicines or cures for diseases. Unfortunately, until we learn more about the deep sea, we won't have these answers. But as the years go on and more research is conducted, we're bound to find something remarkable. For now, we're still making progress, which is great. Unfortunately, another reality is that the deep sea could also be home to some dangerous bacteria that could lead to severe illnesses. Similar to the pandemic of 2020, assuming that's what it'll be called, we can't say for sure that there isn't some sort of disease or virus currently spreading down there. Maybe not a virus or disease, but harmful bacteria or, as previously mentioned, poisonous fish that could infect us should they ever somehow find their way up to us. I would say the opposite applies here as well, but in this case, I don't think anyone listening is planning on going to the deep sea. And given that there are definitely bodies on the ocean floor for various different reasons, ranging from boating accidents to shark attacks, who knows what's been brought to them? I mean, hypothetically, if someone is already ill with a virus or disease, and they get into a boating accident, for example, who's to say the fish that feed on this newly found corpse don't get infected and then spread a disease among the ocean? It sounds crazy, but I've realized nowadays it seems like anything is possible. Another factor to consider is, if you believe in this sort of stuff, the supernatural that could be down there. Plenty of lives have been lost at sea, from pirates to fishermen, of course boating accidents as well as plane accidents. There's also some people that were thrown overboard or disposed of. Either way, they have a sea grave, which means the bottom of the oceans could in fact be full of the ghosts of these people. The Titanic alone is considered an entire sea graveyard to some, while others disagree. Either way, if you believe in this sort of stuff, there is a very realistic possibility there's an entire society of ghostly figures, if that's what you want to call them, living down there. And if ghosts and ghouls aren't your thing, maybe curses are? It's very possible there are cursed artifacts down there, or even sculptures or maybe ancient pieces of art that carry an incredible significance. Personally, I've yet to have a paranormal experience or anything along those lines, so I don't look or read too much into this. But with that being said, it is still a possibility and I'm sure there are many people in the world who are sure there is something creepy going on down there. Between 1948 and 1958, the United States detonated 23 nuclear weapons at Bikini Atoll. On the reef, in the air, underwater, they did it all. And of course, the radiation was bound to follow. That's why the residents of the island were relocated, and when some were permitted back in in 1970, they suffered from high levels of radiation that was polluting the island. And considering how some of the tests were not only done over the water and beside it, but actually in the ocean, who knows what's going on at the bottom of the ocean there? 
And considering how the radiation clearly didn't go away after a short period of time, how can we be sure that it hasn't been manifesting in fish or deep sea creatures for decades, creating mutations of species and for all we know other forms of intelligent life? More recently in 2011, there was also the Fukushima nuclear disaster, which was caused by an earthquake and tsunami. The incident led to over 150,000 residents having to be evacuated due to the air being polluted by nuclear waste. The ocean, of course, was also negatively affected, with tons of waste polluting the waters both during and after the incident. It was the most severe nuclear accident since Chernobyl, which happened back in 1986. Fukushima was also the only other disaster to be given a level 7 event classification on the International Nuclear Event Scale, the highest possible level. Immediately following the incident, and even to this day, there is still an ongoing controversy regarding how safe the water is. In 2014, the World Health Organization predicted no birth issues due to the incident. However, another study in 2014 linked the incident to a more than 14% spike in infant heart disease surgeries. More specifically, surgeries for children under the age of 1 with complex congenital heart disease, or CHD. However, those with such diseases tend to undergo multiple surgeries, meaning the same child could be included more than once in that percentage. It's believed the spike could have possibly come from the radiation getting to the unborn fetus, or the stress that the mothers had to deal with going through the tragedy. And Kaori Moraes, an associate professor of natural sciences at Nagoya City University in central Japan, who led the study, believes that to this day the levels of disease are still abnormally high, compared to the years prior to the accident. So with all this in mind, you can imagine how the waters were affected. Although some scientists argue that this incident didn't affect the waters all that much, because they already naturally have high levels of these chemicals. In September of 2019, Japan announced the only option to move forward with the site's cleanup is to dump the nuclear water in the ocean. These waters contain tritium, for example, which actually has a very low radioactivity and doesn't seem to be all that harmful when it comes to the environment or humans. So regarding Japan's plan to dump small amounts of the water over a 10 year period back into the ocean, you understand why. It's not supposed to cause any harm. Of course, extremely high levels of this stuff at once, well that's a different story. But given that it will be poured into the ocean over a 10 year period, no problem. But then, it's just going to fester in the ocean, which could of course lead to really who knows what. Aside from mutations, there is a less common belief of intelligent life forms living down there. Many researchers at NASA have said the best place to find extraterrestrial life is on one of the icy ocean moons such as Europa or other moons belonging to Jupiter, Saturn, or Neptune. And they also believe the same chemicals and geological conditions are equivalent at the bottom of the Arctic Ocean. And if that's the case, who's to say whatever is capable of living out in space isn't capable of living in the bottom of our oceans? It might sound like a wild theory, but it certainly is possible. And given that we've only really explored a mere 5% of the ocean, there's bound to be endless things discovered as researchers continue to study. Until then, we can just let our imaginations take over and speculate what may or may not be at the bottom of the ocean. And that does it for this one, guys. As always, please let me know what you think is possibly down there. Do you believe in curses or maybe aliens? Maybe it's just dark and boring and there's a ton of scary fish. Unfortunately, we may never find out, but for the time being, I say we read some comments from a previous video. That was an incredible segue. So in the video, what happened to Carol Baskin's husband, Tiger King? Satara MC said, Anyone else would have been investigated for years, especially when she was the one to profit from his death. She was the one he tried to get a protective order against, and she is the one that he wanted to divorce, then leave penniless. She feed the man to his tigers and got away with it. It's sad. I, I, yeah, I agree. The, the fact that, that she inherited everything, like everything, and the kids got nothing, or like 10% or whatever they said from everything, from the millions, I think it is a little fishy. I think it's a little crazy that she didn't say he was missing until three days afterwards. You know, he had no signs of going anywhere, but his truck was at the airport. It, it, like, it, it seems to like something had to have happened. Clearly, he was abducted at the airport. Something obviously happened. And the fact that there wasn't an investigation, it's weird. Paper Tiger Lily said, Joe's Here Kitty Kitty video is fire. The fact that he got something that looked so much like Carol Baskin, I thought it was her at first. When I saw it, when I was watching it on Netflix, I honestly, I was like, how did he get Carol to agree to this? And then I realized it was a look-alike. They did such a good job. She looks so much like Carol. Jamie Zarnecki said, I'd like to hear from a body language expert on her. That's another thing. She probably is lying. Like, even, okay, regardless, aside from everything else, the whole, you know, crocodile in his studio getting burnt down, they said it was arson, but nobody looked into that during the court hearings. Like, what about that, guys? Come on. Roy Logan said she poured sardine oil on him. <laughs> how do you know that uh, they didn't just put cologne on his shoes or something? <laughs> <laughs> Sardine oil. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys have been watching Life's Biggest Questions, and we'll see you guys in the next video.